What is up guys? Welcome back to another options video. We're going to be talking about two options plays today, especially Roku. This is a really good options play that I want a lot of you guys to definitely capitalize on. And you guys, my strategies about how to play Roku and why it's undervalued and how you guys can make some very nice money for next week. So definitely load up on some of these options because you don't want to miss out. And let's check out Roku right now. The floor value of Roku is roughly $300. During early 2021, January, share prices went down to almost $300. And it automatically rebounded all the way up to $465. Same thing this time. Roku stock dropped to $300, the floor value, and now it's going back up again to $331. I have a prediction that Roku could definitely keep going up, especially after shaving off a fifth of this valuation in the past 30 days. I think the share prices have finally learned its lesson, and now it's going up, especially how the general market right now is heading up. Roku in the past week is up 5%, and this is also ARK Invest's favorite stock on their list. Roku is a phenomenal company, especially how they essentially do streaming and hook things up to your TV. They recently also launched a mobile app and it's been doing phenomenally well for a lot of individuals. A lot of people who just recently downloaded the Roku mobile app says it's probably one of the coolest things ever. And movie theaters are dying. Sorry, AMC, but Roku is honestly going up. Roku also celebrates its 50 plus million active accounts and 58.7 billion streaming hours back in 2020, especially after the whole pandemic. I think a lot more people are doing home deliveries. A lot more people are streaming online, etc. stuff like this. Streaming is on the rise. There's a lot of room to grow. And a lot of people are saying that the biggest country that will be growing in terms of streaming is going to be the United States. And Roku essentially has this massive grip on it. And once again, the mobile apps is doing really well. Roku is growing on a constant basis. So shaving this much valuation off is kind of unacceptable. Going from plus 37% in the past three months to negative 2%, Roku has essentially lost a third of its valuation because the general market was going down. I guess Roku was getting kind of bubbly, but right now it's the perfect time to play some options. Now let's head to the Roku options chain. This is where the fun starts. Now we don't play weeklies because weeklies are a little bit too dangerous. You could play them occasionally, but most of the time, be very, very careful weeklies. Let's do something like April 16th, because today is April 1st. Happy April Fool's Day. And remember, this is not an April Fool's video. This is a serious option bid. So we will be buying in essentially a regular call. And we will be buying 80% calls and then 20% puts. That's how I like to play Roku. Why do I actually suggest 20% puts or 10% puts? because that's a hedge. Let's say Roku doesn't go the way you want to and you lose a bunch of money. That kind of hurts and you could actually blow your account that way. Whereas if you bought some puts, you can actually offer it as a little cushion. Let's say on Monday, usually Mondays have massive price fluctuations because that's the start of a brand new trading week. Next week, Monday, I feel like Roku will be pretty green. But here's the thing, I don't have a crystal ball and I'm not a genie. So I recommend 80 to 90% Roku calls and then I recommend 10 to 20% of Roku puts. You better be buying these calls and puts out of the money. For example, these puts, if you bought them yesterday and you're still holding them, they're down 25%. So that's a massive loss on your 10 to 20% position. But here's the thing, a lot of your calls made 13 to 15%. So a lot of these calls made a ton of money and they easily just offset the losses. Now, here's the thing. If Roku on Monday surges like four to 5%, your calls will make 30 to 35% and you will make a lot of money from those 80% calls. But your 20% puts that you have in your Robinhood accounts, they will lose roughly 25 to 40% of their value. But here's the thing. Because you have so many calls, they easily offset the value. Now, what happens if Roku drops let's say all the way down to the dirt, like negative five, negative seven percent Monday. The markets are extremely volatile right now. You may be seeing a massive gain of 50 to 80% on those puts, and then you'll be seeing a loss of roughly 40% on your calls. Yes, the calls will absolutely sting, and that hurts a lot, 
But keep in mind, because Roku dropped negative 8%, your puts will be able to cushion the majority of the losses. So your buddies out there that are straight up buying Raker calls lost a bunch of money, but you made a bunch of money. I know a lot of you guys may be very tempted to make a strangle, which is you buy a call and then you buy a put. Essentially, you make a strangle. It's a combination of best of both worlds. I don't really like strangles that much unless you are predicting a massive price movement for the next week or the next trading day. Strangles has an incredibly high time decay. If the share prices just stay consistently flat or if they don't move enough for just a couple of days, you lose massive amounts of money on your strangle. Essentially for strangles, you're betting on enormous price increases. And for Roku, you better be expecting 7% increases for the next trading day if you get a strangle, which usually doesn't happen. So I recommend 80% calls for Roku and 20% puts. If that's not to your liking, I also recommend 90% calls and 10% puts. Or last option, 95% in Roku shares and then 5% in Roku puts. And all the options that I'm talking about are gonna be two weeks out. And remember, if you get profits like 10, 20, 30%, it's best to close your position and you know get your money get your gains, buy something nice for yourself. Last stock that we'll be talking about is gonna be fuel cell energy. This is one of those stocks that recently hit its floor value of roughly $10. You easily see this imaginary line in between this. The stock really isn't gonna be going down any further, especially with Biden pushing so heavily into cleaner and greener energy, zero emissions and stuff like that. Guess what? Biden recently proposed a $2 trillion infrastructure plan. And the majority of the money in that plan will be used for carbon emissions, greener energy, electric cars, and obviously FCEL is going to be benefiting from this. So what I recommend from fuel cell, especially how recently it did stay pretty flat, I think $12, $14 is a phenomenal resistance point for the company. And this is why I recommend perhaps playing some put credit spreads on the stock since 12 and $13 is a floor value for the stock and also so many green catalysts, it's safe to say that fuel cell energy will most likely not drop below $13. So it's still a put right there. I mean, we'll be buying a put right underneath it. This one right here, click continue, click one, review the order. So you get a minimum credit of roughly 14 to $15, but you have to put down a collateral of 50 bucks. 50 bucks really isn't that bad. Essentially, you're making roughly 28 to 30% in two weeks, and that's pretty good money in my opinion. Here's the cash. Around expiration, you know, 3.55 p.m. April 16th, if fuel cell energy doesn't drop below $13 and stays above 13, you could close the contract for your collateral and you don't have to pay any money. And you get to keep a minimum credit of 14 and 15, so you're roughly 14 bucks richer. If fuel cell energy is below your buy put, which is $12.50, you lose all of her collateral, but you get to keep her $14. If it's in between, for every penny below 13, will be a dollar knocked off her collateral. So let's say ends the day at roughly $12.90, that's 10 cents below 13. You have to close it for $40, means you lost $10 of her collateral. You do keep her $14 at minimum credit, which means a gain of four bucks. That's still a pretty decent amount of cash. 8% in two weeks, not bad, but not great either. Here's the catch about spreads. Please close them before the official expiration date. The official expiration date for this contract is April 16th, 4 p.m. Do not let it expire. If you let it expire, you have a chance of getting signed. If you get a sign, you will probably be in the red and you probably lose a bunch of money. I've been on Reddit. I've seen whole accounts being blown up from spreads because of assignment. If you're afraid of assignment and you better be afraid, please close them before 4 p.m. expiration date. Close at like 3.55 p.m. if Robinhood hasn't done it for you. Another way to play fuel cell energy is just straight up buying the regular calls. Now the implied volatility really isn't that bad. Yes, it's 100% implied volatility is slightly high, but it's really not that bad for your traditional meme stocks. For meme stocks, 100% is honestly pretty generous, meaning that the prices are a little bit inflated, but not that inflated to the point that should turn you off. What I recommend is anything that's under 110%, for IV, if the implied volatility or IV is above 150%, that is a big no-no and you probably lose a lot of money from this. And for fuel cell energy, same thing. I recommend 80 to 90% calls and then 10 to 20% puts. And this way you could definitely hedge yourself and manage together. Too many times do I see a lot of investors and traders, they straight up buy 100% calls 
or 100% puts. And then the trade goes against them and they lose a bunch of money. And then I see some traders go 50-50. Remember, if you buy 50% calls, 50% puts, you better be expecting massive price movements. If you don't, you will lose money on both sides of the trade and you will be negative even though the day is a little bit red or a little bit green. The reason why I recommend 80% of a specific position and then 20% as a hedge is because not every single trading day does a stock move like crazy. Sometimes fuel cell energy, for example, only goes up like 5%. 5% really isn't that much for FCEL. And that way, you could actually manage to make some decent amount of cash, but at the same time, if the share prices collapse, you can actually be able to break even sometimes or even just cushion your losses. That's why, hey guys, thanks for watching and definitely comment below. Check out Coinbase, link in the description. Click on it, make a Coinbase account, deposit some money, and get up to $250 worth of Bitcoin. It's literally free money.